Swinburne University of Technology. Hi and welcome to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Jake. And in this video, we're going to be looking at arrays. So far, we've been using variables to store a single value inside our programs. And that might be a single simple value, like a built-in type, a single integer, or it could be a single custom value, a record, say a single student, which contains their name, age, uh, GPA, etc. but it still represents one student. And that's been great so far. But I'm starting work on this temperature tracking program, and I want to store a year's worth of temperatures. So does that mean I have to use 365 integer variables? Uh, no. The great thing is, you, I mean, you could do that, but it yeah. would be a lot of code. Yeah. Uh, but we can make that a lot simpler by using uh, one of the, the feature that we're going to introduce in this video, which is arrays. So arrays allow you to create a variable that doesn't store one value, but stores multiple values. It makes it really easy to write programs that work with large amounts of data. Right. So an array of variables. Basically, yeah. Cool. So this is my temperature program I was just telling you about. And I got up to five and I thought there must be a better way to do this. I can't write all of my variables out separately. So we can use arrays here. Yes. So this is a case where we could use arrays. So we can see that we've got that those five different variables all really represent sort of the same thing. They represent temperature values. And we've just got multiple temperature values. Yeah. And so this is a case where you can use an array. If you want to store multiple of the same kind of information, then that can go into one array variable. Yeah. So let's, let's put in the array. OK, so here we can declare the array. This declares an array that stores five integer values. And we're going to call that temperature. So an array is a kind of variable. And so we can picture it in the same sort of way. So you've got a variable, you can picture it as one box. An array, what you can do is picture it as one bigger box that's divided up into multiple compartments. So this case, this one temp temperature array has five integer values inside it. And each one of those integer values is accessed by a unique index. Okay. And the index starts at zero and it goes through to four. So that gives us five values, zero, yeah. one, two, three, and four. So we can then see down here where we want to store the value into the array or store the value into our temperature variable basically uh, what we say is we want the temperature array when we write temperature that we think about that as being the whole array all five boxes yeah yep then if you put the brackets square bracket it gives you access to one of the elements in the array and you put the index of the value that you want right so index zero would be the first temperature value. Index 1 is the second, 2 is the I third. See. And that's how I access all my variables. Well, all the, the values. It, it still is one all variable. My, okay. Yeah, so it's one variable. The temperature is the variable and it is an array. The array has multiple values inside it. So it's still one variable, which is the cool part. That's really cool. So when I want to write out my temperature, say I want to write out my first temperature, I just write out my temperature at index 0. Yeah, that's right. And that will yeah. write out my first temperature in my array. Yeah, that's correct. Oh, great. So you can think about it sort of as if it is five variables, where each one is has that unique index. So it's the full name, temperature, square bracket, zero, square bracket. Yeah. Uh, or you can think about it as the whole array with just temperature. And then, you know, you access each one individually. Cool. But this doesn't really solve my problem because I, if I want to write or read all my 365 temperatures, I need to write it 365 times. Well... The great thing is, if we look at these, this code at the moment um, and we focus on the difference between the different assignment statements there. Now, can you tell me, what is the difference between those assignment statements? Well, they look exactly the same except for the index. Okay, and that's, that's exactly right. The only thing that's changing is, is that index. And, it, and what about where we write out the values? Again, just the index. Yeah. Okay, what if I rewrite the code like this? Okay, so how's this working, Andrew? All right, what we can do here is, or what we have done here, is introduce a new integer variable i. And we're going to use that to represent the index in the array that we're accessing at, at any point in time. Okay. And we can start i equaling zero. So we store zero in i. So that's my first temperature. Yeah, so the i will, oh, well, it's the number zero at the moment. When we access temperature at index i now, it reads the value of i, which is zero. And so yeah. that is... My your, first. Yeah, so yeah. that is your first temperature. Yeah, we can then store the value in the first temperature. Okay. We then add one to i, so i will now be one, 
And so when we right. execute temperature at index i now, which which temperature does it's it? It's going to be my my second temperature. Yeah, the one at index one. one. Yeah, so yeah. zero is the first one. One is the second one. And then when we do it again, we add one to i. So now it's uh, two. Yeah. And so temperature at i is now two. So it's exactly the same as what we had before, but now we're using the i variable. But can you see what's different here? But Andrew, there's it's the exact same code every time. That's right. If only there was a way that we could repeat code without having to write it over and over again. I can use a while loop. Very good. So, okay, I've just written this while yep. loop. And so I still have my i variable starting at yep. zero, but I just loop over yeah. the temperature variable. Yeah, so while i is less than or equal to the last index. Yeah. So we can loop through all of the, the indexes in the array. Yeah. And I increment i each time so that I access my next... Yeah. So the first time, time through the loop, you're going to access the first value. The second time through the loop, you access the second value. The third time, etc. Each time. Cool. Yeah. Now, this actually, this is a very, very common uh, programming pattern. So arrays are something you're going to use a lot whenever you want to store multiple values. Yeah, they seem really powerful. Yeah, they are. They're they're really cool. Uh, because of that, what programming languages usually include is a special kind of loop that's used to loop. Uh, a variable over a range of values. Now, that's probably a complex way of saying uh, we can have a, a loop that loops uh, and the index from index zero to index four. So we use it's called a for loop. So we say for cool. i, uh, and we can loop the i variable uh, across a range of values. And so in this case, this code here will loop the value of i from our starting index, so from zero. zero yeah. And then when we get to the end of the loop. It will add one to i, and so it will do zero, one, then two, then three, then four. And once it's done four, when it gets to five, then the loop will stop. So it, it loops through that full range of values for us. So the for loop is keeping track of my i variable for me. Yeah, so it's it's doing this code is exactly the same as the while loop code that you had before. Right. The for loop just does those extra things for you. It it assigns the value of i at the start, and at the end it adds <coughs> Uh, one to the value of i. Well, this is really cool because it just looks like that if I had 50 in temperatures, I'd yeah. just make that for a 50. That's correct, yeah. Oh, wow, that's cool. Uh, we can also print out, so at the moment we've got just printing out the values uh, separately. Uh, we could print those out using a for loop as well. It's exactly the same. That's great. So I know that I should always procedurize my code where I can. Yep. I can move my for loop into a procedure and just, can I pass the array? Yes, so we can. So here you've, you've created a, a print temperatures procedure. And what we can do here is pass in the array. Now, because the array is something large, it's always a good idea to pass those by reference right, rather than so by value. I'm not copying the array. I'm just pointing to it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And so here what we've done, we pass in a reference to the array and we say it's an array of integers. Yeah. Now, one thing that we're going to do when we, when we do this, this will work at the moment because we always have uh, five values in our array but if we think about a print temperatures procedure do you think it would always print five well no i don't always want it to print five so it might, i want to do 365 eventually i don't want it yeah to. that's right and you might just want to print a week or something like yeah. that so with print temperatures uh, we really shouldn't be requiring that the array has a certain yeah, size i don't want to limit it to anything yeah so what we can do here is Inside the procedure, we can use this function to determine uh, the, the, the size of the array or the, the last index of the array. And so instead of looping a fixed number of times, we can calculate uh, the size of the array. So this function is given to us to tell me how many integers are in my array. That's correct, yeah. Oh, that's so it tells you the, the indexes, the valid indexes. That's great. Okay, so I've just changed in my main to use a constant of seven days because I want to print a week's worth of temperatures and I know using a constant is good practice. So yep. I can just use that constant in my array declaration to make sure I'm making the seven that I, yep. that I want to make and it, it'll just work. Print temperatures should just print out the right amount of temperatures, right? Yep, that's correct. So that now because we're uh, passing around or we, we're using the, the size of the array, uh, we can read in or print out you know, different numbers of values. Great, so I could easily just change seven to 20 and everything just works. Yep. So I've also moved my populate temperatures to a, to a procedure because again, it's the good thing to do. And 
we can just deal with passing the array in the same way we dealt with it with the printing, right? Yep, that's correct. So we can use that now. Uh, we're passing it by reference again, and so that allows you to actually change the array that you're being passed. We're getting told the size of the array. We can yep. then use that to uh, make sure that we loop the right number of times to read those values into that array. Great, this looks really good so far. Well, maybe, do we want to step through how that works? Because I know the next one you want to do is, is a full year, but I think if we, if we sort okay. of step through a year's worth of values, it's going to take this, a little bit too be, long. A bit more Let's say if okay. we just do this. Okay, so we start at main, and uh, we declare our constant days in week, and we're storing seven. Yep. Uh, so and then the next instruction is to create our variable array. So we're calling it temperature, and it's an array of integers, and we're storing seven, seven values, yeah. seven integers in our yeah. array. And when we draw that up, you can write, a good idea would be to write the indexes next to the values inside the array. So just so we can yeah. easily identify which one refers to which index yeah. as so we execute it. The first ourselves. instruction in our, in our body is to call populate temperatures, and we are passing a reference to temperature. Yep. So we don't have to make a copy. And then, in and this way, populate temperatures can also change that array. Right. Yeah. So then, in populate temperatures, the first thing we do is create our i variable, which yep. is an integer, yep. so which is going to be our index. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So the for loop now, the for loop when it runs, the first thing the for loop does is assign zero to the index or to the variable i, and then it loops while i is less than or equal to the the last index in the array. Yeah. So less than or equal to six is so is zero less than or equal to six? Yeah, it is. Okay, good. So, uh, so we run the body of the loop. Yeah. So first thing we do is we call read integer. Yep. So let's we, say the user enters twenty six. Okay, twenty six. So we store twenty six in to fill at the index i, which is okay. zero. Yeah. So that's right. So we got to read the value i first. So i is zero. Yep. We then get the to fill array, which is passed by reference, it's actually the temperature array in main. Yeah. And we grab index zero, and at that location, we store the value 26. 26. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. Now, the, yeah. this is the other, this is the bit of magic the for loop does. So it's now going to add one to the value of i. So just like our while loop, it's just doing it in the background, I guess. Yeah. So i is now uh, one. One, yeah. And we recheck. Is one less than or equal to six? Yes, of course. Okay, so we execute the body Same again. Same thing again. We, we call read integer. 18. We get, we get out 18 degrees. We store that into fill at index one, which is our... Uh, or at index i. We read i. i is I, one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> at index i, which is one. That's correct. Therefore, it's our second temperature. Yep. And... Again, the for loop will increment i. Yep, so i is now 2. i is 2. Is, that is less than 6. So we call read integer again. What's yep. our next temperature that we want to store? 47. 47. It's getting so a little we can, warmer. Well, it's, it's summer. <laughs> so we store 47 in two fill of i. Yep. i happens to be 3. Two. i happens to be <laughs> 2. i happens to be 2. So we are storing that 47 within our third, third value. Third yep. value. So and so this this would continue again. So we then get uh, i of i gets to, to be three. Three is less than or equal to six. Yep. So we store another value. Yep. Four. It gets to four. Yep. Four is less than six. It we repeats, store another basically. value. It's going to repeat. Five. Five is less than six. We yep. store another value. Six. Six is oh, it's less than or equal to. Right. I should be more careful there. Yep. Less than or equal to. So six, it still runs again. Yep. Because yep. six is equal to six. Yep. We and then it gets to seven. When it gets to seven, the loop stops. Well, because seven is not smaller it's, than or equal to six. Yeah. So that way we now store uh, all of those values in the array. Yep. So that ends our populate temperatures procedure. Yeah. And basically the same thing is going to happen when we execute print temperatures. Yeah. So it goes up, executes print temperature, and then it loops through in exactly the same way that we did for... Uh, populate. Yeah. So I basically I starts at zero, then it then yeah. I goes to one, two, three, four, and that matches up to the, those those indexes in the array. So yeah. I is basically you can think about it as moving us through the array. Yeah. But I is really just an integer variable. It has nothing to do with the array really. It's a separate variable. Yeah. But we can use that variable to access those different values in the array. So the really the only thing different is that what you do of inside the, the loop. Read integer. Now I have a right line. Yeah, or you have something to print out the value. Yeah, okay. All right, so now how many days you wanted to do a... So yeah, I really need to get my year's worth of temperatures. And I know Are you going to make gonna, the user type this in? Look, it's going to take a while, but I think they might have to. 
the other thing that you could do is is, is read it in from a file. That's probably going to make oh, it a bit easier. I didn't. That's cool. So, so I can get my years worth of temperatures from say a text file. Yeah. And I can put that into an array of temperatures. Yeah. So this would be a way of taking it off the disk, reading it into memory, where you can then manipulate it. Oh, that's uh, perfect. Yeah. And so here's some code. This this procedure would do that for you. Uh, and notice now in main we have an array with our 365 values in it. Uh, all of the loops are going to work. You know, the, our, yeah. our uh, print temperatures is going to work, uh, but we can read the values in from the file. And so you can use that one procedure, that print temperatures, to print the seven days for, for the week's temperatures or the 365 days from the year's temperatures. And then I'll have a year's worth of temperatures in my temperature array. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so here are some extra examples. Uh, let's start off with some for loop examples. So here's one that allows you to loop backwards through a list of numbers. So for can be used to, to move sort of a variable in either direction. We can go, you know, up, so from, say, 0 to 4, or go backwards right, from so of 10 to, to, to 1 in this case. Yeah. I'm, I'm decrementing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Second example is to show that we can actually move our for loop in multiples of two, not just one. Because we can use for loops without arrays. So if you needed a for loop to access, you know, you, you want some number sequence, you know, two, four, six, eight for some reason, yeah. you could use a for loop, even if it's not related to arrays. So it's a powerful looping tool. Yeah. Cool. Here's an array example with an array of scores. So it's very similar to the array of temperatures because yeah. the scores are integers. But just to give you an idea that you can you know, use arrays to store so any sort of yeah, values. Yeah, cool. So another example that we've got here is really cool. We can have an array of a record. So our student record, we can have an array of students. Yeah, so that would be like a you know a class. So here is my, my yeah, list of exactly. students in my class. So and, I've got an yeah. array of students. Each value in the array is one student. And each student has a name and a grade and a GPA. Yeah. Cool. And then we could oh, the other thing we could do as well is we can put rec we can put arrays inside our records. So our student. Cool. Uh, at the moment, we just had like their, their GPA, but we yeah. could actually calculate that. So we could have an array of their, the scores they received for the different unit, subjects they'd studied. So we could have a student containing inside them an array of values. That's really cool. Okay, and that's it for arrays. Arrays are a really powerful construct. They allow you to store multiple pieces of data inside one variable, and then you can access that really easily just using a loop. Yeah, so next up, you might want to take a look at our advanced arrays video. So it's more about how we can manipulate our arrays. Yeah, manipulate the data in our arrays. Okay, I hope you found that informative, and we look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye. What do we usually do at this point? <laughs> this has been a Spindone production.